By the end of this video, we will have implemented a parallaxing background. Let's get started. First, we're going to need some parallax background assets. Here I am in the Unity Asset Store, and I'm just going to go up to the top and search for 2D backgrounds. I'm going to click the first thing that comes up here, and then I'm going to change the price in the filters to only allow us to use free backgrounds. Let's scroll down and take a look at what we can spot. Something here that might work. I kind of like this one here. I can see we have some clouds and mountains. Take a look at the other images, stones and trees, various decorations. Ah, and perfect, it says right here, you can create a parallax background. That's exactly what we're looking for. So I'm going to go ahead and add this to my assets. It's logged me in now, so I'm gonna add this to my assets, accept, and then I'll press open in Unity. And by the way, I'll include a link to this Sayem asset pack in the video description, but you can feel free to use this one or you can go ahead and use anything similar. In Unity, I'm going to press download, then I'm going to import it. These are all for the tile map. We could use these. I can always import these later if I want them, but really right now I'm just interested in this sprites, uh, in this sprites image here, which seems to contain all the parallaxing backgrounds. So I'm just going to import that. Here it is, and it looks like it's already been split up. And here are my backgrounds. Let's take this object here in the backgrounds and move it into the scene just to check it out. These trees look like they should be up close, but obviously not in front of our game. So in order to fix this, I'm going to go over here to sorting layers, and I'm going to add a few sorting layers. I'm just going to click the plus button, and I know I'm going to have several background layers, so I'm going to just name these background 1, and then make a few more for backgrounds 1 to 5. There we go. I've also just ordered them, so 1 will be the closest to my player, and 5 will be the furthest back. I'm going to take this background 1, and now set it to background 1. And I should also make sure that my platform tile maps renderer has its own sorting layer. I could leave it on default, but I like having individual ones. We'll just make a new one here and call it game layer and set the platforms to the game layer. I also need to do the same for my player. And there we go. Now everything's appearing in the proper order. In order to stretch this out, I'm going to change the draw mode to tiled, and that will give us the ability to stretch the width. However, we do see this warning. In order to fix this, I'm going to go back and click on the asset itself and then go down here and change the mesh type from tight to full rect and then we're going to go down and change the wrap mode from clamp to repeat and hit apply. There's a couple ways we could achieve parallaxing. We could write a script which will allow the trees to move based on the player's speed and the camera's speed but I've tried doing it that way before and just found it clunky and difficult to work with. I find a better way is if we go to our main camera and change it from an orthographic camera to a perspective camera. A perspective camera is one that's typically used in 3D games because it does render depth, but we can also use it in a 2D game to achieve a nice parallax effect. Now, you'll notice that as soon as I change this, we lost our camera boundaries. So to fix this, I'm going to go to our state-driven camera and remove the Cinemachine Confiner extension, which was fine for using an orthographic camera, but now I'm going to go ahead and just add this Cinemachine Confiner 2D and reset our camera boundaries back into place. We may also need to go into the idle and the run cameras and either change the lens vertical FOV to make it zoom in a little bit, or in my case, I'm going to change the body from transposer to framing transposer and then add a tracked object offset in the Z by let's say three for the idle camera. Maybe it's too much. Let's try two. There we go, that fixes the camera zooms and the camera lock. But as for the parallaxing, well, now all we have to do is go to our background one. I'll go to the scene view, change it from a 2D to a 3D view, and I'm just going to pull it backwards using the blue handle. If I check in the game view, it looks like it shrunk, but really we're just seeing it further back now because it has depth associated with it. To compensate for this, I can do a couple of things. I can lock its scaling and maybe double its size to two, 
and I may also want to change its Y positioning. But just by doing that and changing its Z position to Z, or its Z position to 10 rather, let's see what immediate effect that has given us. So we can immediately see that those trees are moving at a different pace as our player, which is pretty cool. That's already a nice parallaxing effect we have there. But we can do more. Let's go ahead and add a few more background objects. And also just to keep things organized, I'm going to make a new game object in the scene, call it backgrounds, reset its position, and then I'm going to drag my background one underneath. I'm then going to duplicate my background one, and I'm going to change its sprite to this background two. I'll switch to the scene view so I can see what I'm doing in 3D a little easier. Drag this background back a little further, probably raise it up a bit. I may also have to increase its scaling, but there we go. We can see those trees are there. And I think it's also just easier to test it out if we add one background at a time, change its uh, values around a bit, and then see how it looks and carry on. Oh, that's already looking great. We can have we have a nice parallaxing effect in place here. Let's repeat the process a few more times and see what we can come up with. So here we are, background two. I'm also going to change its sorting layer to background two. Duplicate this three more times and make sure that I update their sorting layers accordingly because I want to make sure they appear in the right order. And of course, then I will give them different sprites. I'm just gonna do these all at the same time for the sake of the video and speeding things up. But of course, you take your time as you're doing this and you work with it and you set it up in a way that you think is going to make more sense to you. So if I go into my backgrounds here and I go to the sprite editor, I can see that there's this tearing issue with definitely the white one and I think these last two as well. So I'm just going to click on one of these like these white clouds and I'm just going to manually try to drag this uh, blue line in by say a pixel. And then I'm going to do the same for the other ones uh, just to prevent a tearing. We'll just it's just collapse the borders a little bit. We may have to do this a couple of times if it doesn't work how we expect it to the first time. Uh, just for good housekeeping, I'll do this on all of them though. Just to... And yeah, hit apply. And it looks like that solved all the tearing issues. And I can just do one more run through to test it out. Yeah, I don't see any further tearing, and we can see that all the backgrounds are moving at different speeds. So I'm quite happy with how that has turned out. In the next video, we're going to be adding this dust particle effect to our player's feet when our player is running on the ground. See you there. Mm -hmm.